My name is Chad McDougall, and in this video we will be discussing thyroid ultrasound. Here's a quick overview of what we will cover in this video. We will start by going over some indications for getting a thyroid ultrasound. Then we will review the relevant anatomy. After that, we will go over the setup and protocol for thyroid ultrasound. And we will conclude by going over the ACR TIRAD scoring system. Here are some indications for getting a thyroid ultrasound. First and foremost, if there is a palpable nodule, it is important to scan it. Ultrasound is also useful in patients with goiter or unexplained cervical lymphadenopathy. Before we start scanning, it is important to understand the relevant anatomy. Take a minute to review the thyroid anatomy and surrounding structures. Here is another helpful image to review before scanning to help aid in identifying surrounding structures as well as the thyroid. Before you start scanning, have the patient lie supine with the neck extended. You can put a pillow under the patient's shoulders to help extend the neck. Next, choose the small organ preset on your device and put some gel on the probe. You can rest your arm on the chest for stability. When you begin scanning, you will want to start at the uppermost part of the right lobe of the thyroid and then scan down to the bottom. While doing this, try to identify surrounding structures, get measurements, and look for nodules. Then slide the probe over to look at the isthmus. After that, you want to get a long axis view of the right lobe of the thyroid. Then of course, when finished with the right lobe in the isthmus, do the same thing on the left side. When getting measurements of each lobe, you will want to measure the width and depth and transverse and length and long axis. You will also want to measure the isthmus in transverse. As you scan, you might encounter a nodule. They are often benign, but it is important to measure it and evaluate it using the TIRAD scoring system. TIRADS is a tool that was developed by the American College of Radiology that is used to evaluate a thyroid nodule using a scoring system based off of five different criteria. Then after the score is calculated, you can go to the bottom of the graphic and determine the next best step in management. In the following slides, we will go over each individual category. Here we will be looking at what the nodule is composed of. If its composition is cystic or spongiform in appearance, then it gets zero points. If it has both cystic and solid appearance, then it gets one point. And if it appears mostly solid, then it gets two points. In this category, we will be looking at the echogenicity. Anechoic nodules get zero points. Isoechoic or hyperechoic nodules get one point. Hypoechoic nodules get two points, and very hypoechoic nodules get three points. When it comes to the shape, you're just comparing the height to the width. If the nodule is taller than it is wide, then it gets three points. Here we want to pay attention to the margins. If it has a smooth margin, it gets zero points. If the margin is lobulated or irregular, it gets two points. And if there is extrathyroidal extension, it gets three points. Finally, we will examine the nodule for echogenic foci. If there are no echogenic foci or echogenic foci with comet tails, it gets zero points. If there are macro calcifications, it gets one point. If there are peripheral calcifications, it gets two points. If there are punctate echogenic foci, it gets three points. So after you tally up the total score, you want to go down to the bottom of the graphic and determine what your next best step in management should be. If the lesion has two or less points, then no FNA is needed. If there are more than two points, the nodule will need an FNA if it meets certain size requirements. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.